And what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Manga Grove. My name is Crusher, and this is today's Ethereum analysis video. Um, I have Sean with me today. Sean, say hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Hope you guys all had a brilliant start of the week. Everything's red. You guys <laughs> just got out of bed. And hey, things are getting exciting. Krisha. Exciting indeed. Now, um, quite a few things to cover for Ethereum. Okay, but um, for those of you who are playing well FUSD or FBTC, no worries. We will be covering both pairs today. Okay, that way we get a more holistic view on what Ethereum could very well be doing. Um, now, Sean, we will be starting off with that Mango dashboard. Let's go ahead and see what the dashboard is telling us, Let's right? Go. So I I'm, actually haven't looked at this today, and um, it'll be interesting to see. Oh, man. It's all red, Kusha. It's all red. It's red, 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 red. <laughs> I have red curtains up today, too. I'm, I'm in a really, really good mood, so you guys are going to have to forgive me. He's, why are you in a good mood? Everything is red. It's by the dip time, guys. I miss. I'm. I'm. I'm actually in a mix of a good mood and annoyed mood because I missed two bids. On one was Ethereum. Actually, I tried to long Ethereum, and I missed it by a dollar less than a dollar. Actually, bounced out. And another altcoin that I've been eyeing. But hey, a few others went through and got those bounces. <laughs> good mood. Good mood. Good mood. Let's go. Let's okay, start. so I mean, Let's clearly go. I don't have to filter out on this dashboard. FUSDT on the dashboard. Second on the list is short. This short signal came in two days ago. Wow. So yeah, I mean, it caught it, right? It caught the dip. Um, and since wow. then, you are up 5.89%. FBDC as well, fourth on the list, also flipped short nine hours ago. Since then, you are up 1.26%. Now I missed um, both of these. Yeah, same here, same here. Now... The thing is that, so Sean is, guys, Sean is happy. He's been buying the dips um, on his various listings on his side. But so for me, it's, I, I'm, I'm going to ignore these short trend signals for now. I, I think it's ignore the shots and go for the long trades. That's how I'm going to play. Keep it easy. Directional um, direction <laughs> <laughs> towards the upside <laughs> for, now, for now. Until we break some major levels, which may happen, guys. May happen. Actually, we were we were having a, a discussion today that I want to fill them in on, right? Um, in terms of basically the macro direction of you know at least the altcoin market, and well, Sean is un under the impression that um, we are sort of you know in that phase where we're entering a bull market. Now, I thought his point. Now, I asked him why, right? And I thought he had a valid valid point. Now, before I'm going to ask you, before I bring up your point, Sean, get ready. Let's actually get onto the chart. I'm currently on that weekly time frame. Gonna switch Ethereum. off everything. Okay. And um, Sean, what were you we looking at in terms of, you know, why you think that all coins may very well be heading into a bull market? Well, are we looking at the theme right now on the weekly Ethereum USD or are we at looking the, at the theme um, the FUSD right now on the I'm currently on FUSD on the weekly. Okay, so if you're looking at Ethereum USD, the signs aren't there just yet. Okay. Right? And this is primarily because Bitcoin hasn't really convinced anyone who's looking at this at a macro um, level, at least, that we're going into a bull market until we break those weekly levels of making higher highs and high lows, right? Uh -huh. We've been putting in those lower highs on the weekly, and we're doing that on Ethereum USD as well, okay? Very, very similar to Bitcoin. However, if you look at the Bitcoin pairing against Ethereum, or rather Ethereum against Bitcoin, okay. so FBTC, that's where you start seeing a different picture. And then that's you look right. at other coins like Cardano, and even a lot of coins, like for example, Chainlink. Chainlink has just been in a massive um, bull run for a while on yeah. the weekly time frame. Yeah. But now the all coins, all many of these low cap coins are beginning to do something different. They're putting in weekly higher highs and higher lows. They are some of them actually threatening to put in monthly higher highs. Yes. For sure. yes. So that's why it's getting exciting, right? Now, I really, really, really want to emphasize that we, m the difference between me saying, hey, we are in a bull market versus, hey, we may be entering a bull market. I think that we are we are on the phase where we may be entering a bull market, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it is confirmed just yet, but um, the signs are there. The signs are there, and I, he may be. Yeah, it may be getting exciting very soon. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you because um, when we were talking about this right the, earlier this morning. And I sort of pulled up the weekly charts as well as the monthly charts. I'm like, damn, like quite a few of these coins happen in that consolidation phase. And we're seeing them sort of, you know, like edge up every week, every month, just a bit, 
you know, yeah. putting in those um, that 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 bullish sort of structure. But I think one thing that really stood out to me that you that you know basically from what you said was um, the last in the last bull cycle. Okay, everything went berserk in a matter of months. Yep, exactly. Right? Two and, months. Yeah, and cryptocurrency markets are the kind of markets where there's a fine balance between patience and being assertive with your um, direction of the tra of the macro market, right? Because if if you get a little bit too patient, you get a little bit too patient, you wait for too much confirmation on the weekly timeframes, right? A lot can happen in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. A lot can happen in just a couple of weeks. And the, the the market will run away from you. And we've seen that happen even with Bitcoin, which is why I think the sweet um, uh, balance is looking at a mix of the higher time frames as well as the mid time frame, which is the daily and the two day time frames. But Krisha, since you are bringing up this conversation where we're talking about a macro bull market mm -hmm. across all coins, let's pull up at BTC. We, we'll, we'll get back to at the USD, but I just want to quickly, quickly show you guys what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I am. Um, I am currently on on the FBTC chart. I switched, in fact, as as soon as you mentioned the higher lows on the FBTC chart. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, I want you to look, look at the week of like I think it is seventh October two thousand nineteen, right? Seventh October twenty nineteen. Okay, so we're somewhere around. Where is that? Okay, here, here. This yeah, candle, guys. October, yeah. So exactly, right? We we put in um, a candle over there, which uh, got got rejected at a key horizontal at around zero point zero two two Satoshi. Yes. Okay, cool. So we put in a high over there, and now now that was a very very important level moving forward, um, going all the way into two thousand and twenty. Now, in the beginning of Feb, we took out that high, right? We closed um, a candle above that high as well as a we wicked above that high. That's right. That was very, very important. As soon as it happened, you can see a massive push towards the key zone. Yeah. Okay. Got rejected over there. Yes. And we we dumped back down, but that dump set in a higher low. We did not yeah. come in and take out the previous low from the beginning of the year. Right? That's right. That was really, really key now. Now, this is where people get confused, right? Yes, we pushed up and we failed to take out the high again, but until we set in a lower low compared to this low at around 0 0.020 Satoshi, Krisha, yeah, yeah, these highs don't really count as lower highs. Not to me, at least. This is Ethereum consolidating on a weekly time frame in a bullish posture. We're yeah. putting in higher lows. Each of these lows that have come in ever since that initial thrust up towards the Kijun have led to higher lows. Right. Yeah. And look at what's happening. If you have your Ichimoku on right now, you can see the Kijun and the Tenkin pressing in <laughs> onto Ethereum's price action mm -hmm. while it's about to burst into the cloud, giving us a massive edge to edge trade opportunity. Nothing's confirmed just yet. Of course, nothing's confirmed just yet, which is why we always have to wait for the confirmation. This could break down. This could break down by all means. But you're seeing things begin to shape up. Mm -hmm. As long as they're putting in higher lows, we may be at the start of a bull market on the all cons. Yeah, and I, I agree with you as and I feel like um, Ethereum is actually putting in, it's actually telling people a story here. Now it's like um, this is likely to come to a climax soon. Right, because yep. of how um, how pressed we are, you know, against that that Kijun as well as that Tenkin, it's like a perfect sandwich right now. Yep. And this could sort of break either way, but um, I think you're right in that the key level over here is going to be taking out those lows if, in fact, this you know has to flip um, bearish once again. But right now, right now, this looks like um, it looks like it's coiling quite literally because if you kind of look at this the structure now, we actually you know what since we're all already on FBDC, we'll actually start off with dissecting the FBDC chart. Okay. Right. Um, no. And then this is where the triangle is being put in. There's like a symmetrical triangle um, being put in on, on FBTC right now. And you can see that it's sort of coiling. We're putting in these, these um, you know, these higher lows. And then we're putting in these lower highs, but it's still sort of getting sandwiched. We're getting pressed into a very, very narrow zone right now. Indeed. Right. Um, but against um, basically on today's weekly close, 
I want you to notice how uh, we got rejected off that Kijun once again, right? So we got rejected off that off that Kijun. I do believe that in order for this picture to actually, you know, pick a side, um, I'll be looking for the next weekly ca candle to take out that Kijun if we have to flip bullish. I think Indeed. that the but the consequences of us actually taking out the Kijun on the weekly time frame is going to be major. It's going to be major because if you just drag this line out, um, you'll notice that this is also a historic trend line on the FBDC chart. I agree. Right. So um, it's looking it's looking um, neutral right now, actually, on the on the weekly time frame. What are your thoughts on that? It is. It is like so. So the weekly time frame is telling you to be a little bit more patient. Right? Yeah. Be patient. And yeah. if you look at the Kijun there, that was telling you, you know what, you don't want to be getting too aggressive over here, mm -hmm. which is why we've not been looking to um, long Ethereum against Bitcoin at the very least yeah. against those major levels. Right. I yes. was looking at Ethereum as a buy opportunity for bounce plays, mm -hmm. or only if we get a major major dip for a long term position. We're not seeing that just yet. Perhaps on the weekly 21 EMA, we could look for a trade, but I think there's something easier that we can look at if you're looking at, at BTC on the higher timeframes, because your Ethereum moves a lot faster than Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do in these kind of situations is like, okay, this coin's moving a little faster. So I like to divide the time frame by two. Now dividing the time frame by two on the weekly gives us three and a half days. So let's go ahead and look at the three day. I want you to keep your Ichimoku time yeah. frame on or wow. template on. Okay. Look at the three day. Turn on your three-day 200 moving average as well. All right. And you're going to see something that you're going to find very, very familiar. Whoa. In one of my trades. Whoa, setups, whoa, okay? whoa. Exactly. I'm going to get rid of all my line, lines, guys. I want you to notice how the 200 simple moving average is just sort of coming down on price. Now I put my line, lines back on and what do you know? Look at that trend line on top. Exactly. That's beautiful. Wow. So it, it's, it's guiding price really, really well as resistance. You can also see <laughs> the hint of a bull market in the near future, the cloud has flipped green, Krishna, green. on FBTC. Oh, my, my. Right? Now, I don't want to get too excited just yeah. yet because if we do not clear this 200 moving average and see continuation, this may flip red again. But um, historically, whenever we've seen all, all of these bullish where the price is living above the 200 moving average, price is living above the cloud, the Tenkin is living above the Kijun, the 21 EMA is supporting the underneath the price action, and prices well, well above the cloud, we go into a nice bull market. Just historically, you can see that really, really nice runs on Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, I meant Ethereum against Bitcoin. And, yeah. Right. It, like I said, the, we have the signs, we have the hints. No reason to get, get aggressive just yet. But if you mentally prepare, right, start learning the things you need to do and start getting ready, even if it's even if you have all the tools ready, right? If you have all the skills ready, you have to now get mentally ready for what your plan is moving forward, guys. Yeah. Oh man, this is. Um, I'm still. Um, my my jaw is still like kind of. It just hit the floor. I haven't looked at the three day time frame at all for FBDC. So this is actually pretty significant. And Sean, the the um, price relative to the two hundred simple moving average. Like, I mean, there's not enough price. I'm currently on that Polo exchange. There's mm -hmm. not uh, much price history to give me a long enough line for the 200 simple, but um, it's been pretty freaking neat on it so far. At least yep. whatever price action it does have on it, um, it's been it's been really good. It's a guide, right? It's a guide. It's, 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 a, beautiful it's a general guide, guide as to yeah. whether or not um, we are going into a bull trend or a bear trend. You don't have to take trades directly off it, but it helps you know that, hey, you know what? Um, things are beginning to look good because it's it's... Price has now been living next to that 200 moving average for a while, right? It's been coming up there and then bouncing up, making that higher low, and then coming up there, getting rejected, bouncing down again, bouncing up, making that higher low, and then coming up there again, right? So what's happening is that the 200 moving average on the three-year time frame is getting squeezed between yeah. the tank in the 21 main key June, right? You're not seeing that much movement anymore. So we are. It, there's going to be a decision that will be made very, very soon. Does this break down or break up? And that's what I'm saying. Don't get impatient just yet. You can position yourself, yes, but you have to do it strategically. Yeah, yeah. This uh, this picture is looking um, is looking we really could, good. We could break down. We could break down. We could break down. Always, always 
remember that you do not want to be longing against resistance right you want to wait for that resistance to flip first and then long or wait for price to get rejected against the resistance and long into support right yeah. and support is coming in at Krisha, the tenkin and the kijun would be one level that you're mm -hmm. looking at and okay next would be basically somewhere you'd be looking to fish for a higher low somewhere around 0 0.02135 satoshi somewhere yeah. around there right yeah so yeah it's gonna take some patience I think it's going to be this level right here at around um, a point zero two one six around ish. Um, I yep. think there's a horizontal coming in at that point. Um, but no, this is this is a decent picture. I think it's. Um, I, I I was wondering, you know, is um, Ethereum that coin that is really the market leader at this point? Because I noticed last time, as soon as we broke that two fifteen region that I was looking at, so I was looking for a price to break two fifteen on FUSD in order to see if we would have continuation all the way up to all the way up to two fifty. Right. And um, I noticed that as soon as Ethereum managed to take that out on the daily time frame, um, a lot of the other alts like Cardano, Zilliqa, that's when all of those kind of alts started popping. And they ran what, like 100 percent? Zilliqa ran more than 100 percent. And um, but I felt I felt like Ethereum was the clear picture at the time. I, I, I don't want to give a strong opinion on that. I do believe that Ethereum sets the tone for the market, but is it a market leader? I'm not entirely sure that I buy into that um, narrative, right? Okay. Because every time people have said that, hey, so-and-so coin is leading the market, I've always noticed that there was another coin that really started the run and people just left it um, unnoticed, but they hang on to what they do notice and say, hey, this coin started the run, right? So I don't think we, it doesn't really help us, right? It doesn't really help us if you think about it. What really does help us is to see, hey, which coins are moving and which which um, category of the market cap are they in? And if you do notice, currently it's the low cap to the mid caps that are moving, while all the higher cap coins are kind of just sitting steady, right? Yeah, they're kind of downtrending a little bit on the lower time frames. Seems like money flow is flowing from the higher cap coins to the lower cap coins and then vice versa. So I think that's a better way to look at it. Yeah. Okay, no, that's that's a good sort of uh, perspective on, on your side. I think that's... Uh... That in fact is better, right? That way you're keeping yeah. uh, you're keeping your eyes open in basically every corner. Um, yeah, like a broader picture of what could very well be going on in the market. Because what tends to happen, right, is people say, "Hey, you know what? Um, Ethereum is leading the market, so I'm going to wait for Ethereum to move, and then I'm going to go ahead and buy all these other coins because Ethereum's leading the market." I don't think that ends well for people because you might just be sitting in a coin that's not moving while Ethereum leads the market and then ends the market as well. Like for example, ADA, right? ADA started moving. I didn't wait to go and buy LTC and XRP. Like a lot of people did. We know people who did that, right? Yeah. They watched ADA move and they went and bought the other coins. But what did you and I do? We bought ADA. ADA moved. We bought ADA, right? And ADA kept moving, 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 moving. And as long as the trend was strong, we just kept buying ADA, right? Until it reached um, a level that was really key, the monthly level, and then start losing its trend momentum. Okay, we got out of order. Then we start noticing that, hey, these mid-caps are moving. Okay, cool. Now we buy the mid-caps, right? We bought Zilliqa, we bought this, we bought that, but we buy what's moving, right? That way you're not just waiting. Um, you can't take a start position, don't get me wrong, guys, but don't miss out on opportunities on tr trends that are trending. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So Apologies now, question is, um, <laughs> question is, is at the BDC, are we in a trend? Right now, it seems like we are kind of falling down. We did lose a wick on the three-day time frame. Okay, we, we lost that wick low there. So let's actually get on to some of the lower time frames, perhaps the daily. Let's start off with the daily and see what um, we could very well be putting in there. Now, uh, relative to the cloud, it's all right. I don't, f I don't think that at the BTC does well off of the, uh, the cloud on the lower time frames. Perhaps when it's trending well, like in a proper bull market, I noticed that that's when, um, you know, the cloud comes into play. But right now, I feel like it's more of a consolidation kind of, um, you know, price action that we have here. I think so, too. Right. I, so I, I don't I don't think you're going to get much out of like the daily, or even the 12 hour, perhaps the four hour will give you a more um, short term trade aggressive because the theme does move aggressively. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I just pulled up the four hour Krishan. You can see that we have a bearish TK cross broken to the cloud too. And we're seeing continuation. That was the trade right there. Break into the cloud, lost the tank in, lost the Kijun, lost the 21 EMA, and you're seeing continuation right away. And that's already a nice um 
yeah, that's a good 3% move already. Yeah, I think um, I think uh, uh, Ethereum also does pretty damn well on the ranges. We could, on the weekly scale, we could see price come all the way down to 0 0.023 sats, but it's always going to be an if this, then that, if this, then that, right? Yep. Um, so at least, at the very least, right now, just looking at the four-hour cloud, um, if you want to go based on this, then it seems to be doing fairly well on the four-hour cloud. Yeah. Exactly. Right? So I think um, we could, at the very least, expect an edge-to-edge -edge on the cloud from, so we clearly are already broken. The uh, bottom of the cloud is sitting at around 0 0.23 sats. That's a good about 3% to the downside, right? Like so. Sean just mentioned. But I'm also seeing a pattern play. I'm seeing a potential pattern play on, um, well, on ETH that we clearly well broke out of already. But uh, this is it. It's a symmetrical triangle that That's was forming okay. on ETH. Um, yeah, that broke to the downside. We have an official break, right? And so. let's see where this takes us to. And once again, like very, very close to the bottom of the cloud, they're slightly underneath. But um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good play to be had right now. It's, it is looking weak on the lower time frames. I mean, we could, um, you know, on a more macro scale, we could actually see FBDC come all the way down and test its major, major uh, weekly levels. The first one yep. being at 0 0.023 sats. Exactly. So I, I do want to point something out that I've been eyeing for a while now. If you go ahead and look at the massive resistance line coming in from your weekly Kusha, do you have that up your weekly resistance line coming in um from your lower highs um that you marked you out that a, was essentially that was essentially being guided by the key June okay yes yes frame. i have that I right, have you that have that on. right yes okay so now switch back on over to your four time frame and on each of those junctures, right, each of those areas where we've come up and tested that weekly resistance line you're going to notice that we consolidated consolidated and attempted to break past it yeah. But all we did each time was break back down, right? And this time I was eyeing for a potential break to the upside. Because if we did break to the upside, it would be pretty pivotal, pretty pivotal. But we did not. We broke back down again. And each of those times that we actually broke, da broke down, we did a edge-to-edge -edge trade and then saw continuation to make a higher low um, on the weekly time frame. So we may see something like that, an edge-to-edge -edge trade. So we've broken down, okay? May see an edge-to-edge -edge trade, perhaps come down to the... Um, 200 moving average on the four hour lines up at the bottom of the cloud perhaps wick down there put in another low high on the four hour time frame and then come down to put in a higher low on the weekly time frame so that's how that's a puzzle that i have in my head i'm looking for something like that and in the meantime perhaps we start seeing um money start flowing in or rather until that happens, we won't be seeing money flow in from the lower caps and mid caps into the higher caps. That's just a theory, guys. So let's see how it plays out. Yeah, um, I actually put on the 200 simple moving average on the four hour time frame, and I no noticed that every time we lost it, right? So um, the last time we we came up to test the weekly level that you just spoke of, um, we we made an edge stretch on the cloud. Okay, not only did we do that, we had we saw further continuation to the downside. We lost the four hour 200 simple moving average. And that was your first clue of whether or not FBDC was going to see even more um, downside. Downside, exactly. Right. So, so and so we did get that. Um, however, that downside did set in the first sort of higher low on the weekly time frame. So we could very well see if we lose the 200 simple moving average, um, albeit there is still time to go, guys. Um, but if we lose the 200 simple on the four hour, once again, I will be looking for further con continuation to the downside, perhaps setting in another higher low. Yep. So um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an if this than that. But right now on the on the more immediate time frames, OK, F. BTC is looking bearish. And for those of you looking in to build those long positions, I do believe that there are better bits to be had on this one. Yeah. Right. Um, is there anything else that you want to add to the FBDC analysis before we get on to FUSD? Nope, we can move on to FUSD. Brilliant. Okay, FUSD. Let's actually start off with that weekly because, well, we did close a weekly candle today. Right. So let's just zoom in. Need to fix my scale. Okay, so I have FUSD here open on that Kraken exchange because, well, it's rich in price history. So why the hell not? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of that 200 simple. It's just in the way. So what do you know, Sean? We did get rejected. So I was actually looking. I've, I've been telling the guys how um, FUSD does really, really well off of its horizontals. 
Yeah. I believe that if you can just play the horizontals, you're likely going to make a lot of money if you're just willing to, you know, yeah. set your biases aside and just play the horizontals. And what yeah. do you know, the one that I had um, on top, I think I was telling you about this, which was 247, 248-ish, all yep. the way up to 250. Um, and we actually got up there two weeks in a row and got rejected. Yep. Both times. And so right now we did close, however, over the Kijun on the weekly time frame. So how important do you think the Kijun is on FUSD's weekly time frame? Uh, I, the way I see it is that Ethereum moves so aggressively that if you do put too much importance on the Kijun, you may end up waiting while it dumps on you. And I think rather you might be better off looking at the two-day time frame and pertaining to Ethereum's longer um, so, sorry, higher time frames and use the weekly Kijun as a guide. So what I'd be looking for is for, and this is what's worked for me in the past. I look for Ethereum to test its levels on the two-day time frame mm -hmm. and then close above its weekly time frames. If it doesn't do that, then I'll expect continuation okay. towards the downside on the next week, right? But again, with that, no, no, uh, notwithstanding a potential test of the weekly time frame before seeing continuation towards the downside. So for example, let's look at the previous um, high, lower high, somewhere around 17 Feb 2020. We lost the weekly key June, right? You can see that big red candle come yeah, down, Yeah. right? But look at what happened on the next week. Yes, it looks bearish, but we did see a move up first, right? Test the key June and further up onto the lower time frame levels and then dump back down to the next weekly support level. So a theme can get a little volatile that when you got to play for it. Yeah, no, I, I agree there. So with that, then let's actually move on to the two-day time frame. So I've marked um, the Kijun, the weekly Kijun, with a, uh, a line segment. Okay, for those of you who catch it here, it's at 226, give or take. By the way, um, the, key, the, the Ichimoku cloud, guys, is um, a part of the Mango Ribbon. For those of you who want access to the Mango Ribbon, we have a bunch of, I think, four to five EMAs and MAs, plus the Ichimoku cloud. Now, for those of you in a more um, beginner trading view account, um, I think you guys are limited to only having three indicators on your chart. So if you want access to the Mango Ribbon that gives you access to more than three, um, you can just sign up. I will include a link below, okay, for the Mango Ribbon. You can sign up there and I will grant you access to this free indicator. Cool, cool. All right, so let's actually get onto that two-day time frame and see where that line segment comes in at. And uh, Sean, we actually are sort of hovering underneath it. However, we have not closed this two-day candle, of course. Exactly. Right. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting picture. What are your thoughts so, on this? So uh, you may have misunderstood what I was looking for. So essentially, what I'm looking for is for the week to close over the weekly key issue. Okay. While defending the two-day levels throughout the week as well, right? Ah, now, what are the okay. major two-day levels? Let's say we're not looking at any EMAs or any Ichimoku levels. The, the one that that is right in my face is right over here at around 217.53. Yes, okay? yes. You can see that we had a neckline, lost it last time, and broke down very, very aggressively, right? And you can see that big candle at around March 7th. Well, it lined up with that big weekly candle too, right? But it was a, losing a major two-day level that kind of dictated the move towards the downside. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool. So now you can come back all the way to around 28th April, came smacked up against it, rejection, 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 tried for almost a week, right? You can count the number of candles. It's around six candles, mm -hmm. um, actually two weeks. And um, boom, um, thrust it down, came back up again, and then finally broke past and had another thrust towards the upside to put a low high on the weekly, right? Now you're seeing how, how this all kind of synchronizes the two-day time frame and the weekly. Or rather, that's how I like to look at it. Now we have come back to test that major 216, 217 level. You can see we wicked off it earlier this morning. And the question is, do we hold it? If you turn on your Ichimoku or rather your Mango Ribbon, you're going to see that we came pretty much tested the Tenkin, tested the 21 EMA, and we're living above both of those levels right now. Both. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this picture is still on the more, more than bearish. It's definitely on the more neutral side when you zoom out onto the two-day time frame and stuff, right? I would give this the benefit of the doubt, to be honest, Kisha. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, count, uh, discount a bounce over here. Yeah. So I think um no, of course. That's what I'm saying. It's it's neutral, right? Yeah. It's yeah. neutral in that it could have a bounce. However, there's also a chance that it could break to the downside. But uh, Sean is right and is that um the key level of here is gonna be two seventeen. If we start closing two day candles underneath two two seventeen, uh that is gonna be your first tell, guys. 
it's going to be your first bearish tell because even this 217, the way it held over here from April 28th all the way to um, May 28th, so one month of holding that as resistance until we managed to take it out. Okay, and that's when we saw that that initial sort of trudge to 250. We got up there. Okay, and now what do you know? We're actually coming back down to test this 217 region once again. Okay, so um, if we break this to the downside, it is going to have some bearish implications. So watch out for this. This is going to be the key level in the more sort of immediate, you know, the more immediate time frames before we actually close the next weekly, um, the next weekly candle. The midterm time frames. Yes, the midterm time frames. Apologies. Um, okay, so no, good, good um, eye on this level. I think I brought it up in my last um, video, but I, I'm kind of hazy on the levels I sort of brought up there. I was only aiming for 250. I was looking for 211, 250. Um, but yeah, this is good, good stuff. Okay, so let's actually move on to the lower time frames. I want to see. So now, question is, can we? You know, do we actually break that? Is there anything at play here that would suggest that, or does it? Is there anything at play that would suggest a bounce? And if you pan on over to your four hour time frame, Sean, just notice where, uh, where price is relative to the Ichimoku cloud. Indeed. And the tone of moving average as well, bouncing off that. Oh, man. Wow. So, How, I mean, the, cloud, 200, the 200 has been pretty all right on the four hour time frame. It's, uh, it's a good guide, but you can get uh, easily chopped up on it. That's one thing I, I've I, noticed. I agree. I like to have it on because I want to see confluence yeah. with the cloud right when it lines up with the cloud that's when i play it mm -hmm. that's when you can really really use it on the four time frame especially and when the 200 moving average lines up at the bottom of a flat cloud i like that or the top <laughs> of a flat cloud right you can Fair see enough. what's defended right now so what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on this picture i mean it's a it's a bearish picture of course but um uh, i still think 217 i, I think it's it's yeah, going to be it's think, really going to hinge on that right now i really don't want to i really don't want to um, dive into the lower time frames and get caught up over here because a lot can happen. There's a lot of four-hour candles in a um, two-day time frame, right? But if we do start closing four-hour candles above, let's say around 226, Krisha, mm -hmm. I think we may make our way back up to the top of the cloud at around 236, to be honest. So yeah, yeah. I actually want to see how price um, on the four-hour time frame did relative to the this 217 region. So notice how from um, April, from sorry, from May 18th all the way to May 20th, we held it as well overhead resistance, overhead resistance here too. There were only a few sort of instances where we managed to kind of take it out, only to lose it on the next um, the move down, right? So it yeah. seems to be pretty. It seems to be a pretty guide even on the four hour time frame. So that will be something to watch out for, because at the end, I mean, you're looking for those those key, you know, those those signs of whether or not this trend could have further continuation. Indeed, yeah. Right. So, um, okay. I mean, this is uh, neutral, guys. For now, neutral. Is there anything else that you want to add to at the USD, Sean? Um, not really. But uh, since you just talked about looking at how this level, the 217 level, um worked or rather how Ethereum played off that 217 level historically i zoomed out and i had the 227 level marked out as well because that was the target we were just looking at looking for rather a theme to close over to look yes. for the upside so i have both those horizontals marked and if i zoom out it kind of looks like a zone right it is really volatile so the zone between 215 and 226 is an 11 dollar nominal value but consider Ethereum's volatility, it's not much. So if you go ahead and mark that out as a zone, Krish, you're going to see that, that that zone has been key in dictating whether Ethereum is going to bounce or not or get a rejection. Yeah, I, th I think so too. I think so too. And I'm also noticing on the 12-hour time frame, Sean, is that um, that 217 level has actually held as resistance in the last time. That yeah. one month where we were holding 217 as resistance that even that was true even on the 12 hour time frame we we did not close a single 12 hour candle over that region yep. and the time the one time we actually closed over that region we actually had that um, that immediate push all the way up to 250 yeah so i feel like so, it's going to be critical even on the way down so if we lose it on the 12 hour as well um i think it the zone breaks too right the yeah. zone that you're looking at will also break to the downside so that's something to to note there if we close about 227, though, I think we're going to see um, 
continuation to the yeah, yeah continuation to the upside so yeah i think at usd is kind of neutral it's going to be an if this then that so keep your um keep your horizons kind of broad out there <laughs> keep your eyes open definitely there is no uh, i mean there's it doesn't pay to have biases right your only duty is to be on the right side of the market here right it's to make money and you only make money on the right side of the market yeah and like i said if something's trending just keep buying a coin that's trending i'm pretty happy right now my zilliqa just bought this morning this is the fill i was talking about to you kush i'm not sure if i mentioned in the beginning of the video just bounced to good it's good 10% up already now this is this is what i mean okay now it's around 8% but um this is what i mean like you just coins that are trending on the pullbacks they are buy opportunities right you can take some off the table right off the bat if you're a little unsure but um as long as you're in a bull market or rather bull trend the trend is your friend until the trend ends and zilka <laughs> trend is not ended just yet not yet cool so yeah we'll dissect other all coins in yeah. um the we've, upcoming we've got a few requests for zilka so perhaps um later this evening we'll cover zilka bounce guys for those of you who are who have been asking and i've got a lot of requests the 21 ma the tenkin on the 12 hour time frame if you guys have the mango ribbon that has been your guide and hey we're bouncing off it as we speak right now we lose that level go down to the kijun that's all you're looking for but we will cover video later this evening yes that's sir it. Thank you, Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So now you guys have our thoughts on FBDC, FUSD, and a little on the macro market and what um, what we think in terms of overall structure. And yeah, with this, guys, trade safely, trade stress-free, trade the mango way, trade the easy way, guys. Ciao.